let's uh, pick up um, the last two objectives on this packet, um, which were differentiating brands. And we're going to talk about the two types of brands and the two mechanisms for brand diversification. So the first one is the endocrine glands, and these are ductless glands that release their secretions into the tissue surrounding or the tissue fluid surrounding the gland. Examples of endocrine glands are your thyroid gland, your uh, parts of your pancreas are endocrine, your adrenal glands are endocrine, your pituitary is an endocrine gland. Right, and the unique feature here is that there are no ducts. So the, the uh, endocrine means secreted inside, and these tissues or these glands are uh, associated with secreting their secreting, releasing their secretions into the blood, and as such, they become hormones. So your thyroid hormone are some of the secretions from endocrine glands, your um, ACTH, uh, your adrenal hormones, and so on and so forth. Okay. The other type of gland is your exocrine gland, and these do have ducts. So these glands are associated with ducts, which are just channels that actually carry those secretions out onto the epithelial surface. Just to backtrack here, we mentioned that epithelia had two functions. One of the functions was lining certain body surfaces and cavities. The second function was forming glands. Okay, so just to uh, backtrack there. The exocrine glands would then release their secretions onto the epithelial surface and it'll move into the direction you want to go to. Examples of these glands are going to be your mucus secreting gland, which is the goblet cell. We talked about this. The goblet cell is a unicellular exocrine gland. It's one cell, but it is a gland. Other examples are your sweat glands and your oil glands, which are sometimes called your sebaceous glands and your sudiferous glands. We'll talk about those uh, later on today. There are also salivary glands, and then the liver and parts of the pancreas are also exocrine glands. So just to make a note there, the pancreas has dual, um, it has both exocrine and endocrine uh, parts to it. Let's look at some of the mechanisms for secretion. So typically, uh, for the exocrine glands, we mentioned that the products are released via ducts. Now there are three mechanisms by which those products are released. There's merocrine secretion, apocrine secretion and holocrine secretion. Merocrine secretion is simply exocytosis, right? So this is the process of a vesicle being formed within the cell. Within that vesicle, there's some sort of uh, product or secretion, and that is ruptured or lysed or released out onto the surface of that cell. And as such, that cell will release its products. An example of this is the salivary gland, the second type of secretion is apocrine secretion. Now, as the prefix apo will tell you, the, only the top part of the cell is released during this process. So there's a shedding or a rupturing of the apical most part of the cell, and that is how those secretions are released. The example for this is typically in the uh, lactiferous glands or the mammary glands or the breast. And then finally, holocrine secretion, as the name again implies, the entire cell is ruptured here. So the cell is not fair that the part of releasing those products or secretions, the entire cell must die and be uh, ruptured out onto the surface. The example here is the sebaceous glands, and this is how this gland typically produces sebum or oil, which is released onto the skin. Okay, let's look at an illustration of those. So the example of merocrine secretion, was in the salivary gland. Another example of American secretion is the goblet cell. So very similarly, there is a cell. Within it, there are these vesicles that have these secretions, whether it's the salivary secretions or mucin in the case of the goblet cell. And then those secretions are exocytosed out of the cell. This mechanism actually preserves all parts of the cell, okay? Apocrine secretion, the apical part of the cell is uh, rupture it off. So in the uh, regrowth process, the vesicles will 
move towards the topmost part of the cell, whereas the nucleus and other organelles remain at the bottom of the cell. And then when it's time for these secretions to be released, the entire apical part of the cell will sort of cinch off where the plasma membrane rips apart from the rest of the cell and sheds off those secretions. And then this cycle will continue on as the apical part of the cell regenerates and is shed again and on and on. And then the third or the example for that type of secretion was in the breast. And that is typically associated with the, uh, ch the change of the size of the breast that we see associated with the menstrual cycle. So because the breast will regenerate and then uh, the, those secretions will be released, the breast size will then change. And then the final example here is holoquin secretion, which is seen in your uh, sebaceous glands. This is where the entire cell is ruptured. So in this example, we have several layers of cells. At the bottom most layer is your stem cell. So our stem cells are cells that will then regenerate or reproduce new cells that will migrate towards the top. When they get to the apical most surface, they will then rupture off. The cell will die or lice or burst and release the uh, cytoplasm, which has the content or the production. In this case, that would be sebum. Okay, so any questions on those three type, those two types of glands and those three mechanisms of glandular secretion? No, okay. Our last objective in this packet is to talk about the three membranes very briefly and then look at the examples of those three membranes. So to define a membrane, a membrane is an epithelia and its underlying connective tissue. We talked about the fact that epithelial cells are avascular, they do not have blood supply. So they must receive their nutrients and oxygen and diffuse their waste through the underlying connective tissue, right? The loose connective tissue. And so the connection of this epithelia and the connective tissue underneath, together those two structures form a membrane. Okay, there are three types of membranes, the mucous membranes, serous membranes, and cutaneous membranes. Mucous membranes are um, moist in their, in their uh, structure. They line the digestive and respiratory tract. They're typically associated with mucus. So what type of epithelia would we be talking about when we say mucus is associated? We spoke about a, a special type of epithelial, or epithelial cell that is typically associated with the mucus. The Bobbitt cell secretes the mucus, but what type of epithelia is that usually associated with? Columnar cells, right? Columnar cells are those tall cells. Um, and around columnar epithelium, we typically find uh, cilia or microvilli and then gobbet cells, right? So this is usually your digestive tract where we see columnar cells associated with microvilli, as well as the respiratory tract where we see columnar cells associated with cilia. And then in both of these locations, we typically find gobbet cells, which produce mucus, and that helps to moisten these two types of epithelia. Okay, you want to have your intestines nice and moist, you wanna have your respiratory tract nice and moist. Um, so we have a coating of mucus in these two areas, um, as well as an opening or connection to the external body surface. So the nasal mucosa, the, um, or the uh, mucosa in the mouth, the oral mucosa, the inside of the ears, and other orifices typically have a mucous membrane, a moist membrane. The second example is serous membranes. So serous membranes usually line uh, three body cavities we talked about. Uh, the pleural cavity, which is the sac that surrounds the lungs. The pericardial cavity, which is the sac that surrounds the heart. And then the peritoneal cavity is that thin sac which surrounds your abdominal visceral organs. Now this membrane is typically associated with a very clear, thin fluid, which we call a transudate. And this fluid is slippery and it helps to produce friction. Now, as I mentioned last time, these are three areas where you really want to avoid friction. So example, 
around the lungs, around the heart, around the organs. These are three areas that are moving with respiration. So your abdominal organs are moving with respiration, your heart and lungs are moving with respiration, and of course the cardiac cycle. And so you wanna have a thin membrane that, that is coated with this, at this transudate to help reduce friction. And then the last membrane is cutaneous membrane, and this is everywhere that you can see on the external surface of the skin. Um, it's a rough, dry, drier, not as moist as your, your mucous membrane, um, a rough, dry membrane that typically covers the external surface. Okay.